Hi, my name is Xiao Yan. I'm a research staff member at IBM Teacher Watson Research Center. Today I'm going to give a tutorial on IBM Pairs. It's a large scale, big geospatial data and analytics platform. Pairs website is at https pairs.res.ibm.com. IES stands for research. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact the admin account pairs at us.ibn.com. Here is the outline. I will quickly go over the sign up process and then give some live examples for doing queries on the user interface. And then in the end, I will demonstrate the API calls using the REST client plugin. Let's get to it. Okay, here's the pairs web page. On the left hand side, here's a link to the user menu, which is very useful. It shows you how to use pairs, how it's designed, and the details of each data set. And then this tutorial video will be hosted here as well. On the right hand side, here's where you can sign up for a new account. For IBMers and academic or nonprofit users, you can request a trial account. Once you click subscribe, it should bring you to the subscription page. We need your work email and your institute's name because the approval process involves validating the email versus the institute. And we'll love to hear about your use cases uh, using pairs. Once you submit it, you should uh, receive an email saying we are processing your request. Usually this takes less than one business day. Once the account is approved, you'll get a welcome to IBM Pairs email, and you need to use the link there to activate your account. Basically, you need to set your password. Please note that this link is only valid for one use. The second time you try to use the link, it will not work. It will give you an invalid link, um, and this is for security reasons. But if you are already activated but forgot your password, you can reset your password and it will bring you into the system. Okay. So let's get started. Your login ID is your email address you used. Here are a few main menus. The query page lets you define the query conditions. The job page shows you all the queries you have done. And because this is a big data retrieval platform, you actually don't need to wait around for the query to complete. You can log out and log in, and the queries will be saved under your account. The metadata page, I'm going to go into this into details because it ex explains the architecture of the da data organization. First is the data set. As you can see, these are the available data set, like ECNWF, European weather model, elevation in the US, global weather model from NOAA, crosscape is historical crop planting map in the US. Uh, we also have a drone data set we're experimenting, and MODIS satellite. We have global satellite coverage of MODIS with two different products. Prison is the historical weather data set in the United States. You can go back more than 10 years. IBM Analytics is where we put our own developed model from pairs data and put it back on the system for users to use. This one is called reference evapotranspiration. A climate forecast is based on NOAA's CFS model, and it is a long-term forecast with six months to look out. This one. Is SMT self-learning model is our own statistical weather forecasting model for two days ahead in the United States. And then NAN forecast is also United States weather forecast from NOAA. Then there is, uh, then there is a data layer. Inside each data layer, inside each data set, there are multiple data layers. Let's pick USA weather. And as you can see, 
there are parameters such as temperature, relative humidity, solar irradiance, pressure, etc. So we covered data set and data layer. The next one is data table. Data table is something new we're developing, and it's going to be uh, used for hosting Internet of Things type of IoT sensor data. Basically, uh, this will enable hosting our point data that it's a long series of temporal um, events. We'll save the data table for our next tutorial. The next one is data region. Data region is most useful for satellite data. So for example, if I choose MODIS, because satellite data is organized by tiles, what it means is it's just like a snapshot picture of taken by a camera. And you can look up the tile of an area you're interested. For example, here, the horizontal tile 7 and vertical tile number 5. And it's located around in latitude 40 and this longitude. For MODIS, we have global coverage, so it has all the, all the tiles. It has a complete list. OK, the last one under metadata is color table, which is the, the color scale we use to visualize data. You will see later. Only administrator can associate a color table with a data layer. So please let us know if you have a favorite color scale you want to use. Please do not change anything in here. Just for one example, radiator. Yeah, it shows uh, spectral data um, scale. And help menu has three submenus. One is the user menu as we just mentioned about. So this gives you access inside pairs. And then there's tutorial page. And the tutorial page, it will host all the tutorial videos. Our video today will also be put in here. And then of course we have our acknowledgement, acknowledge all the data sources that allow us to use and distribute the data. Okay, so let's get started. So query is under submit new, submit a new query. As you can see first, for a query you need to define a geospatial coverage. It can be a single point, can be a polygon, it can be a rectangular area you draw on the map. Okay, let's first take a look at single point query. Click anywhere in the world. It will fill in the latitude longitude for you, or you can choose to type in your values. And then you can choose the temporal coverage. In our case, I want to take a look at climate forecast that's six months out. And this one gives you the interval. And you can also just do date. And what this means is it will bring you the data that's prior to or equal to this timestamp. All right. We can choose all the parameters. And then submit this query. And this can act right away because point query is very fast. And the data is displayed on the, on the table. It's very convenient. You scroll down here. See, this column is a unit. And then the last column is the, uh, the value. You can download the data in CSV format or in JSON format. I just want to point out here on the bottom, there's a feature that's very useful. It's called the API string. You can copy the API string 
to a clipboard and save it to use later for API calls. You just need to attach the web server address prior to the API string. We'll get to that in the end. You can also say send to query page. What this does, it remembers all the query conditions you put in, so you can modify it any way you want and resubmit that query. This is how you modify your query, and it's very convenient. So point query is very straightforward. Now let's go on to polygon queries. There are three different polygon groups of polygon, personal, group, and repository. Personal are the, the polygon that you actually uploaded yourself. So I'm going to show you how you add your own polygon. Under the query menu, the second item is called Add Area of Interest and Personal. As you can see here, I listed all the polygon that I uploaded. To add a new polygon, just click the little Add icon and give a name a key and a name. Here I want to explain share with group. The concept here is you can choose to share your polygon with a group of the user under the same category. And this is a way of you know collaboration. I have in a, I always share my polygon with a group so everybody should have a base set of polygon show up in their under their group uh, category. So let's choose a KML file. Right now, we only support KML shift file format for now. And then add. You can see we just added test and go back to the submit query page under polygon. You should see the test I just put in. And for everybody else, it should show up in the group. So for example, these are the shape file that other user actually shared in the group. The third group of polygon is called repository. This is very convenient. We have uploaded all the shape files for all the states in the United States. So if you put in USA, you will see all the state. And you can start typing and, and search, find the shape file you need. And very soon we will upload all the country shape file as well. Okay, now let's do some queries. The first example I want to show is for orange farms in a county in Florida. So in my personal polygon, I have a polycon call, Florida, Isoto County. And I'm interested to take a look at the latest uh, NDVI satellite image of the oranges. So what I do here is satellite, just one of the satellite product. NDVI is Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. It's a measure of how green the canopy is. And I can add a condition on the historical planting map in the US. I want only take a look at oranges. The index for orange is 212. You can find this index in the user menu and submit. And this is the new query we just submitted here. And this brings you to the jobs page. Most of the area of the jobs page is a map for visualizing the results. And on the right hand side is the details of your job. See this one is complete retrieving the data. And I just want to show you one useful um, 
or two here click there and click on the little pen here for editing you can give a nickname for example i will say orange florida and you can also copy the api string just like we did save it for later use and what we got here is you click on the file name and it will show you the data layers it got back check on the box for example here is the crop because we use crop to do the filtering there are lots of orange in this county and if you click on the 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 timestamp here, this color scale bar will show up. And this is the one we define in color table, as I mentioned in the metadata. And we're interested to take a look at the NDVI value, the distribution of NDVI. And click on the timestamp here, and it will show you the NDVI color scale. You can click on it. And uh, I will show you, um, show you the, the value where you click. And this is a very useful. You can set up a time, time range and to collect a long history of NDVI evaluation e uh, evol e evolving. And you can even correlate the NDVI to your yield of the year and also correlate you know, with all the aggregated weather information. So that's the first example. So now let's do a query outside USA. One feature I just show you here, I didn't mention. You can also do send to query page. That's the same concept as a point query. So here I'm gonna Save some time for the save some time to to do the um to do the query. Mm. All right, it doesn't matter. For example, forest fire. So for this query, I'm gonna show you how you choose an area and query the area. Um, just by clicking on the map. So I'm interested to take a look at the impact of this awful forest fire in Canada this year. It happened, I think it started in May, fir or May 1st of 2016. So I'm gonna go zoom in and go into that, go into um, the region first. I know it's in Alberta. And it's around Fort McMurray. Yep. So what I can do is click area. And I can just, you know, drag and draw a little rectangle. That's the third way of defining defining the area. And it was happening in May 1st, so I'll do the query from April to maybe June 1st. Now June 15, let's say. Then you will capture the before and after picture. And this is uh, actually choosing both, both product for MODIS. Uh, Aqua and Terra, these are two equivalent satellites. Okay. Well, this one is working. The next query I want to show you is let's do something um, in Africa. 
this one I'm interested to take a look over the weekend what the precipitation is gonna be like and I want to see what the evapotranspiration is like so I can prepare for irrigation in some of the areas in Niger uh, in Kenya so this is a Kenya and the time is for this weekend GMT time and I chose ECNWF that's the European man, uh, model it's global weather model and I choose in precipitation rate and the filtering condition is the reference evapotranspiration is greater than 5 okay so this one is working we can take a look at the one we just finished that's one about the forest fire so as you can see this is March I think it's kind of still pretty cold and it gets greener time goes by and then this is the day before forest fire and then you see two weeks after the forest fire it's how massive impact the fire is you can see it here and you can see um, it should be the same story on the other satellite okay after winter get greener and then the fire and this is very useful this too you know just a few click you'll know what's happening this is very useful for monitoring environmental uh, issues and events okay the one for Kenya also complete here for Kenya we're trying to take a look at the weather pattern um, precipitation and you can see these areas has low precipitation basically means is a low uh, evapotranspiration because we said the evapotranspiration to be less than no um, more than five if I click on the timestamp it's less than okay this this area has high evapotranspiration so they are higher than five okay I was click sorry I was clicking on precipitation yeah so you see the the moving of the rain cloud leaning area and yeah I want to prove to you the evapotranspiration it's the query area is higher than 5 okay so the next query I actually want to do something uh, for a much bigger region like China and do um, this is a really large area uh, and I'm interested to take a look at the weather pattern the seasonal forecast and around uh, New Year's time during that weekend what's the weather is like I want to take a look at precipitation I want to take a look at temperature let's submit this one Yeah, I just want to point out there are a few things that's pretty useful to do. For example, look at the MODIS satellite image. When we look at the um, one of the fire that's after the forest fire, you can change the color scale. You still use the green, you know, the, the green. Um, green color color bar but you can change this to make it you know to make some area more stand out for example this is this and I was I want us all the area that's below 0 0.5 to stand up see so really show up the area that got impact by the forest fire because the NDVI value is much lower than the other areas okay yeah okay so this query also returned already 
This one is going to turn a little bit because it's generating visualization files. The first parameter here is ground temperature. And you can see the ground temperature in China, very cold and very warm in the south. So it's a lot of fire <laughs> files that we generated. And this is the precipitation pattern. So this way you can plan your vacation accordingly. Say, so, okay, some area are more likely to have rain. I will avoid for my vacation if I am going there for vacation. Okay, so let's do one more query. This one is quite special. It's our experimental drone, drone data layer. So this coordinate system, this little square, is actually is our research center location. So I'm, and I'm going to take a look at the latest drone we have. And I'm going to take a look at the uh, one of the band. Uh, but in addition, I actually, let's make it a little bit more fun. Let's compare to, um, to satellite data. See how they compare. Of course, this is extreme. A drone image, the resolution in our case is about 20 centimeter, and the satellite image is about 250 meter. Of course, there are other uh, high resolution satellites out there, commercially available or publicly available. Um, but drone really offers an opportunity that in because satellite image one is it's very far and two the resolution couldn't really get to sub meter it's very hard to get to 20 centimeter but maybe it's possible um, and then three is it's impacted by cloud cover so if if there's cloud you're out of luck so we had that experience especially with um, the coast area of um, California um, because it's so cloudy we couldn't get much uh, clear sky images of the area so John can overcome overcome that if we have a very you know reliable and consistent operation of drones Okay, the data is back, so 100%. Yeah, I'm trying to cover as diverse data sets and use cases as possible to give you good feel on um, how this works. One rule of thumb is when you um, create a query, try to create a query that's not so big. For example, instead of you do, okay, 10 days forecast for the entire United States, you can do five days and then the query size will be half. And then you can launch both of them at the same time. That's how you get the data back faster. And for all the query you have done, you can download the data you want. You can save the file. And, um, and we encourage our users to use other GIS software for additional geospatial analytics. For example, QGIS and S3. We, our platform, if you watch the introduction video, we focus on bring the, the content, bring the data uh, to, to user and make it very easy to use. We take the heavy lifting of, you know, data scientists shoulder so they don't have to processing and curating all the data. Okay, so this is a John data. You can see the cars very clearly. Actually, this data set 
reach the limit of the OpenStreetMap rendering um, resolution, the initial, the raw resolution is actually higher than what I show here. And for comparison, uh, yeah, this is MODIS. Okay, just, just something to keep in mind that drones really can be very powerful. Okay, so next we're actually going to go into the API section. Um, so I like to use a little web browser plugin called REST Client. You can see here. So instead of typing in the API call string on the on the browser, I put it in here. So we have the first one is the point query. Okay, we already prepared. So you can just copy and paste and send. It will ask me for username and password. Yeah, this is a lot of data for, for it to um, put it into JSON format. The default here also is, is JSON format, but you can in our menu, you can find, you can actually ask to return our CSV instead. Yeah, this is how it looks like. Value, latitude, longitude, data layer, that's the temperature. Okay, now let's check the polygon query. So that one, the type is point, this one is polygon. Yeah, so this one, it will give you the important thing here, give you a job ID. This is the one we need to retrieve our query. I think we have the jobs, and then put in our job ID. And they say it's succeeded already. And what you need to do is just after query jobs, download. Put into the browser. Let you download the file. Yep. So that covers the basics of API call as well. And I hope that is uh, useful. And thank you very much for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions. And welcome to Paris.